Hi, my name is Terry Lee from Sweet Pea Papers and the Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group. This is video three in our series called The Night Before Christmas. And this is a lap book using the, um, uh, the Let It Snow collection from Graphic 45 and the uh, little golden book, The Night Before Christmas. Now, you may notice that I have a red cover. For some reason, I've noticed that it looks orange on camera, but it's not. It's a darker red. I have no idea what the deal is with the camera. So, you'll notice also that that's a second cover. Um, I had trouble with the first cover once we were off camera. The first thing was that I noticed that this spine right here was really, really big. And so that meant that this part right here, where the flaps and stuff were, or in here, was going to have to be really thick. So this is what we're going to do. Um, I've made a new cover, and I've changed the measurements. I have made a PDF this time with the measurements on it for the new cover for you. It's not to scale, but it does have all the measurements on it, and it shows on the inner spine where the holes are going to go. And you'll notice now there are two inner spines. So we'll talk about that in just a second. The other problem I had with this was that the heavier paper, because I can only get this navy blue in a 73-pound paper, um, it cracked. So I don't know if you can see, like, right along here, it cracked and up here it cracked, and um, anyway, several other places, and yeah, right here also on the bottom, it cracked, and so I was upset with that because it wasn't something that would kill the cover, like that it can't be used, it just means that the paper on the spine was going to have to wrap around and be thinner, which is fine. I was planning on using the uh, pad paper for this anyway. But I decided to make a new cover that the spine was smaller and that these two were even and that we put half of the little golden book uh, journal in one side and half in the other. Okay, so this is what I came up with. Let me set this to the side, the blue one. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so these are the new measurements. Um, because what I decided to do also, let me say this, is I decided to make this a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, the, and a little bit wider. Instead of eight by eight, they're eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And that's because I decided to have the little bit of a border around the edge of the 8x8 eight eight papers. So that meant I had to make them a little bit bigger so that I had an eighth of an inch. So that ended up a quarter of an inch larger on the top, the bottom, and the sides. Okay? And um, so it also meant we needed two hidden spines instead of one. So I put the measurements for those on there. So our new measurements are seven by eight and a half, and you're going to need two of those. Eight and a half by eight and a half, and you're going to need two of those. And then you're going to need two spines. They're going to be even instead of one bigger than the other, and you're going to need one one and a quarter by eight and a half, because you need to match this here, the height. And then um, you're going to need um, the uh, larger cover, which obviously this is not to scale, uh, the larger cover, which is going to be two and a half and not three, so a half inch difference is quite a bit in the spine, by eight and a half, which is the height. Then you're going to need two one inch hidden, they're going to be made into hidden spines. In other words, we're going to cover them, uh, put the elastic for the, um, the journals in through the holes and then uh, glue it to the inside of the book instead of having the um, 
uh, sewn them to this actual, um, um, oh, what do you want to call it, craft board. Um, that's not what it's called, but um, I'll think of it in a minute. I always do. Um, and I always want to say cork board, but that's not it either because it's obviously not cork. Um, and um, that would be too difficult for me. Um, and I didn't want the larger uh, crocodile holes, even though they're going to have eyelets, to show um, on the outside of the journal uh, covers. So, um, so we're going to need the two inner spines. And those are going to be a little bit smaller, so you're going to see the red edge around them. And um, those are going to be one by eight and a half. Now the center pieces need to be covered, and I did two of the three so that I could show you. Let me set that up there too. So I could show you how the center piece is done. You have to remember we're going to score these. And oh, I used thinner uh, paper. It's lightweight. I had used uh, medium weight, and I didn't realize that I thought I had used lightweight, but I had used medium weight, and I think that's part of the reason that it cracked. I also used an actual spacer. I made a one quarter inch spacer, and when I put the paper down, then I put this down. This is about the weight of two cereal boxes. Um, thicknesses put together plus a smidge more and then um, like I said I made a one quarter inch spacer so when I put let's say this piece down then I laid this here before I laid the next piece down so that I had a wider and consistent instead of me eyeballing it um, place for it to fold I think I made the others too narrow and so that was part of the problem as well. Um, I realize this is video three, and if you followed along vid the um, and used the lightweight chipboard, that's it, um, that I uh, had said I was using, then you're going to be fine. Um, and you're if even if you use the medium weight to make it heavier um, than like bookboard. Um, you're still going to be fine if you use a thinner paper. This is 65 pound paper and it is red. I do not know why it looks orange. I mean, it's this color red, a little bit lighter. So who knew? Um, it also is going to look better against the cover of the little golden book. Let me show you. Because instead of making it blue, which I thought the blue was the least amount of color on here, so it would be easier to match, I actually um, came close to matching this. Plus, it's going to be wider around. Remember, we made the book wider. And it's going to have a little border on the top and the bottom where it wasn't going to before. And I've got that gold tinsel, and I may put that around the little golden book. And we'll talk about that later. So let's go ahead. And I didn't show you how to do this on the blue one yet anyway. But anyway, you'll still be able to use the blue one on a project that's a lap book with a three inch spine. Or if you think that your um, foot flaps are going to be thick enough. And I'm going to regret it if they're too thick um, to fit in a three inch spine if you're going to use something different or if you're going to add um, additional things to your pockets and flaps and things, then the three inch spine that you have is fine. Otherwise, like I said, you can use it for a different project. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, so now to do this spine, this part right here, we want to cover it an inch on either side. Some people do two inches, so keep that in mind. This spine is one and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Okay, so it's eight and a quarter tall. 
So we want to make it 8 inches tall. We don't want to go all the way to the top. We want it to be the same size as the paper that we're going to cover it with. That way we won't see this seam right here where, we've, where we have glued it on. I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty talking this morning. I uh, fell off my work stool last night and hit the back of my head, bruised my tailbone, and um, hurt my shoulder and my elbow. So um, I'm a little goofy this morning. So what we want to do is we want to glue it in the center, equal on either side. We're going to put quite a bit of glue in here quite a bit of glue here and then um, we're going to glue the heck out of this like we did on the front side when we put these papers on I mean the uh, card on here so let's go ahead and like I said I realize this is video three and I apologize for changing the spine we were still going to have to go over this anyway And I don't know why I started going over the, um, and you don't want to go up on the eight by the eight and quarters by eight and a quarters. Um, and you don't want to go down on the paper. You just want to go in between. We'll go on the paper when we glue the paper. And remember when you, this gives you some drying time where, um, uh, the other ink, the white glues, um, barely glue and those really do not. So the Fabri-Tac is better for this in my mind. And then we're going to glue all of this. And we're going to put quite a bit of glue on here. If you're squeezing these hard, you might want to let go for a second and then come back and then you'll get more glue out it gets kind of squeezed and then it's hard for the for some reason for the glue to come out you have to kind of let go and let the uh, compression on the sides go away i don't know how i discovered that but i did it seemed to work better on the center here you also do not want to go down on the red And then you want to move this to the side and move it far enough that you're not going to get this paper on it when you're gluing, putting glue on it. If you numbered them one, two, and three like I did, make sure the three is on the side you um, glue down. So I'm going to move this way over here out of the way where there's no chance of me getting this paper on it. I have a scrap paper now because I accidentally laid it down and was gluing it when I turned it this way I laid it on the glue on the spine by accident so that put glue on the front of the paper and ruined it um, so let's glue this and I filled my glue up to thin it and you want to make sure you go right up to the edge so let's go around the edge If you go off like that, make sure you rub it so that you don't get it on the front. Or wipe it, get it off your work surface. And then let's go back and fill this in. Remember, we don't want any bubbling up. And I realize we're doubling the glue here. Um, Part of this is going to go down in that seam. Where it folds. I made the mistake of not folding it or not um, making the little mark um, with your bone folder 
on the front cover piece where it folds over. Oh, and I made it an inch all the way around the fold over. This part right here is an inch all the way around. Our other one wasn't that big. It didn't need to be because the paper was going to go all the way to the edge and cover it. So I realized this is a lot of information of changing what I did before. But if you want to, uh, you can actually take the measurements and make this uh, new uh, cover exactly like this one very easily from information I gave you. It's just new measurements, different color paper, and one inch thinner cardstock. I mean, um, craft board. You want to make it even on either side. You want to make it even from top to bottom. And your um, colored paper or your pad paper will come and cover almost all of this except in the seam in the middle. You want to push it down really well. Get the corners. I have a corner on one of the pieces that's kind of up a little bit. But like I said, the uh, paper will cover it. And you want to make sure while the glue is wet that you go ahead and do your bone folder. Make sure that you um, score it flat. I have um, I folded mine a little bit just so I could see where it was. That I needed to uh, run the um, seam. That may pull your edge up a little bit because it pulls it in, but that's okay. You can just put it back down. Go all the way to the top where you remembered to do it. And this will put it down in where you where you did all that glue. And it'll be in the center of that quarter inch gap. Then go ahead and make sure your center is glued down really well, especially at the ends. Actually, you want to do it inwards because you don't want it to bubble up. If you hear it crackle, there's still little air bubbles in there. So you want to keep doing it until you don't hear that anymore. And I think the sound I was hearing was from the edges because when I folded it up, remember it pulled up the sides a little bit. This is a little crooked, but it's too late to turn it, but it will be covered, so it should be fine. Then wait for it to dry, and then fold it again, and you don't need to fold it past 90 degrees. Okay, so for right now, that makes us completely done with the cover. And we can set it to the side. Okay, so now we have our center part that we had started. Um, I don't have all the papers set aside for it. I want to look through and see based on what we're going to put on it, um, how we're going to do the papers. I'm not going to do colored paper on our flip flap that we made. Let me show you that again just in case. Okay. And um, because I don't want to have it clash when I put pockets and belly bands and we've got a front piece that we're going to put on here, I'm still, um, and I'm going to use the red paper 
instead of the blue, um, the blue ink should be fine because it matches this. And it matches the blue in the papers. So I'm hoping that it'll be fine. I am going to trim this down a little bit smaller. This was a scrap from our um, paper in the back when we cut um, a piece to make it 8x8. Eight eight. This was the uh, other side over here. So it's... Um, how wide is it? Is it... Is it the full four inches? It doesn't matter. We're going to cut a piece of the red. I mean the blue. The blue. I'm so sorry. We're going to cut a piece of the blue so that it's 12 inches long and seven inches tall. Now remember this is eight inches high, so we want it to be seven inches tall. So let's do that. So the book is gonna be the red and the blue to match the uh, colors in the paper. Uh, the green was too hard to match, so I didn't, um, I didn't try. Well, I mean, I did try, but I was not able to end up with it. Now, this red paper, um, I don't think I have the label anymore. I may have it, um, but if you look for it, it's this paper is a, is huge. It's 11 and a quarter by, not this piece, I've cut some off by 17 and a quarter so it's really long so you have a lot of paper to work with um, you still have to use three seams when you're making the cover but you only need a piece about six inches long on the end okay so let's set the red paper aside yeah see we had inked it blue already I don't know what I was thinking so we're gonna do the full 12 inches and then we're going to do it um, seven inches wide. Nope, that's incorrect. We're going to do it, set. well, well, we'll cut it at seven. And then we'll have the full 12, but we're going to turn it the other way. Oh, looks like there's a little wrinkle on that corner. Oz is in the other room, rolling around on the floor, making weird noises. And, um little yip noises he's got an itchy spot on his back that he's trying to scratch he has an itch that he's trying to scratch scrap so now we're going to score it at four and at eight Yes. So we're going to put this on four, of course. And then score it. And we're going to score it at eight. That will give us a seven inch tall and a four inch wide piece for our cover. Now, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, yes, I'm thinking. So, we're going to take it and we are going to, you know, we may have to cut some off of this, this end, so that it, because we're going to fold them in. If this is the full width, then um, it's going to hit this side. So let's cut an eighth of an inch. 
think that'll do it off one of the ends after we've scored it oops gets that funny little corner off too there was one on both sides I didn't realize till just now so now we can fold it and this side will be be the inside So let's fold it this way, flip it over, um, sorry, the peak wants to be the fold, so let's fold it in this way, looks like my score was crooked. I hope this isn't one of those projects. <laughs> Not really sure where my other bone folder went, but this one is better for that. It's got that. Yeah. And then we'll fold this one in this way. that makes it cover the whole front and this side is straight so the paper wasn't crooked unless I moved it when I slid it over which is entirely possible all right so now we have this that's gonna go on the front of this all right, so now you can see that flips open, so we don't want that. So we're going to have to put a tie on the back in the middle. And we're going to use the white ribbon. So I know when it's been 30 minutes we've um, I forgot to turn it on for an hour um, and because of the change in the cover it has um, taken 20 minutes just for that it's kind of weird that other bone folder just disappeared hmm very very odd All right, so let's put our ribbon on the back. Yes, that means it's gonna kind of flop around, but we don't wanna forget to do it before we glue it down. You can just mark it, and then before you glue it, you know we may just do that. But we're going to put a ribbon on the back before we glue it down. So seeing that there will probably remind us before we glue it. So let's just do that. That way it isn't flopping around and getting in our way. We want to cut this paper. So that there's a little bit of a border around the edges so it matches everything else. I'm going to cut it there. Depending on the paper, 
you may have to use some other color pen. Um, I got one out, like I said, that has the tricolor. Well, it has quad color, but the green doesn't work. So officially it's a tricolor pen to um, use if you need to. Um, the pencil's not going to help you really except for on the blue. Now this one, obviously the chalk is not going to show up on the white, but I made sure to draw the line out far enough that it's on the blue. Of course, save these. Now, let me look and see what we put on this before I glue it down. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover each side with pad paper. I'm not going to make you watch me do that. We're going to be putting on po different pockets and different belly bands because um, because of where it's located in the book. Okay, we're not going to build up the insides because, um, well, you could. We're still going to have pockets and tags and maybe a booklet in the center. So, if we have a booklet in the center, though, we should have put a gusset. So, we're probably just going to do tags. So, I'm going to glue this down. And then I'm going to do the same thing to cut the size. I'm going to make half of the papers backing papers, half of the papers front papers. And the reason I'm going to do that is because we're going to put um, two belly bands and um, three pockets. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it because there's no reason for you to watch me paper these papers. Pretty sure you know how to glue paper down. Okay, all right, we'll be back in two seconds. Okay, I've got everything covered and I also covered this white with a solid blue. Now, I did that because we had inked it in the um, Uncharted Mariner. Now, um, we can also use, I think we can use the uh, berry, oh, what's it called? Um, something berry um, red for some of the others. Now, the main part of this one on the other side I think we're going to have to do blue for it to match because we will see it. So I don't really want to do red on one side and blue on the other. But we're going to have to, which I forgot to do, um, ink the papers. So I want you to go ahead, take your blue and just run it along the edge. I forgot to do it, so now I'm not going to do it through the whole thing. I'm not going to do it on part of them and then not, you know, and then do it on the other part. So this is just going to be for any white papers that we have. So at this point, we have on our big fold out, we have that one paper. That's all the farther we've gotten. Um, that's because we had to talk about the cover. You'll be happy to know I found my bone folder. It had slid up under some papers. Or my one bone folder. I have two. Um, on this one, we had our original cover paper. Now, I'm not going to put a pocket or anything on the front. What we're going to do is we're going to decorate it with some of the um, ephemera. If we have enough time, I'm going to talk to you about the paper a little bit. But if we don't, then um, I will talk to you about the paper right now. I forgot that the pack that I got came with the printed papers. You know, the ones that the pictures on one side and the not solids, but patterns on the back side. 
So that's one. And this is the 12 by 12 with two, only two, not three, two of each paper. So we're going to conserve these, plus we have the 8x8. Eight eight. We're not going to conserve them, but we're going to use them uh, if we run out of the 8x8. Eight eight. I had also gotten this um, with it in, in a pack, the two together. Um, I believe it was... Um, 30 something dollars but it was cheaper than buying the two separate um yes this book is expensive to make if you use kit papers um and this one is eight patterned and solid papers okay and there's two sheets per per, per design so that's 16 okay now on a side note the back cover, which don't know where the one is that I had for for the for this one. The front cover, don't get rid of it. Um, this one came apart. Uh, it was just papers when I when I opened it. I did not pull the pad apart. Um, maybe that's why. I don't know. I don't remember now. Anyway, save this because look at this big picture that we could use right across here. Now, we're not going to use it because we're not going to have anywhere to use it. Uh, and we've already used it here as, as a big solid picture. But you could. So don't get rid of it. Okay? Then the same thing, oh, and when you clip it together, this one has the seam, or the glue. This one did not. Hmm. Anyway, when you go to clip them together, make sure you put a piece of paper, you fold it over uh, before you put the clip on so you don't end up with the indentation on the paper. Also in the uh, printed papers, I took out the, it comes with two uh, half sheets of cards that you punch out. So that, we'll put that in the ephemera. It also comes with a page that looks like this. A page that looks very similar, but the pictures are different. Okay. Then, um, oh, apparently I pulled two of this one out. So we're going to keep these out and we're not going to use them to paper or keep one of each one out. And we're not going to paper uh, with them. We're going to cut them apart. We've got a belly band cards and more belly bands that we can use by cutting this off around. All right, you got it? Okay. You'll notice this one doesn't have the holly around it either. Okay, so that's what we're going to do with those. Now. Um, on these, remember you're going to cut them with the border and the way I did the pattern, now on this it's let it snow on this side and you want to make sure your pictures are right side up Then on the back it's this pattern. So um, then I, when you open it up it's the same with the green. It's this on one side, and it's this on the other side. So I decided to use the solid instead of this because that looked too busy to me. Up to you how you want to do the papers. Um, we're going to put a pocket here, and I think we will use this here. But it's only going to be two inches high and across here, so I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. On this, we're going to uh, put a belly band. On this one, we're going to put a side tuck. Now, I want to see the pattern. It says it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It says it right across because that's the way I cut it. 
So I want to be able to see the pattern. Look at the nice snow uh, Christmas Santa here and Santa going down the chimney. This says very merry, that let it snow. And uh, this one, the same, let it snow. And it's got the uh, Santa with the sleigh. And it's got a Santa with a bag and a Santa with a tree. A Santa in the woods. Okay, you get my point. I want to see all of these. So what we're going to do, be sure to save every single little scrap. These can be used as belly bands somewhere else. In fact, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that. No, it's just Santa's feet. Anyway, so we're going to use acetate. Now, I got this photo album thing, and so it came with acetate, and it's thicker. Then it's, it's more like a uh, projector thickness that you would write on and use as an on an overhead projector if you're old enough to know what one of those is. Or if they still use them in schools. Not sure that they do. Um, and the other thing that I changed is the ribbon is going to go around this way and not around that way. And you'll see why later. Um... So, we're not going to do anything on here. We're going to use some of this pre-cut ephemera that I bought separately. And in fact, this one looks like it would fit really well. Oh, it's too big. So we're going to have to go back to something like this. Maybe we'll put it in the middle. So I will decide what I want to put on there. I could put this, actually. That would be nice. And it would match the paper on the back. All right, so let's do that. Now that I've decided I want it, I'm going to go ahead and put it on. Here, my hands are going. I had a bowl of cereal in between, too. So now, my glue is a little thick, so you can thin that out with 100% acetate. Not nail polish with scent in it or anything. It's just going to be crazy. So I'm going to uh, do that before the next video. There's a little piece that slid up in that corner. And do you see what I did, right? So, okay. And I just got it all over the acetate. We should have enough on the end. I'm being very fumble fisted. Probably should have put this on off camera. I didn't think about all the little intricate gluing in the corners that were going to be needed or was going to be needed. 
make sure your Santa is right side up or whatever you put on there. And put it in the middle and make it straight. Now, I'm not going to put it all the way down in the middle. I don't know, maybe I should. Let's go. Yeah. I'll put it right there. Okay. Now, on this side, we're going to put the acetate belly band. Once I show you how to do this, I won't show you again, so it won't be, don't worry, it won't be in like every video. All right, I'm going to grab another piece. I'm going to need a magic marker for this. I think I'm going to use my red one. This is a Sharpie. So I want to go ahead, since it's clear, I might as well make it a little bit bigger. to hold the card in more securely. Then you want to cut it off to the length. We're going to cut the width first, make the best use of our scrap creation. However, once we cut the length, then we'll have the length for our uh, side pocket. Now this has the red ink on it, so I'm going to go over just a smidge. Just so we don't accidentally get that red marker on part of our project and take that off. Okay, so now this is going to be, oh I cut it off because I'm smart that way. So let me cut this little edge off. Oh. Oz. That should be our length. Because I think. So now you just want to put a small bead of glue. And then the side pocket, um, you're just going to put on the same way as the belly band, only you're just going to um, glue three sides instead of two. I'm sure you've made a pocket before. get that much too short. I 
right that's just gonna make the card shorter you know what I mean it's gonna make the card shorter now I'm planning on cutting the cards and the tags out of this um, blue and then um, I'm, I've got this stencil and I've got the picket fence and so I have some small brushes that are going to get here today from Amazon so that I can ink this without going all the way over into this or we could do two rows but you, I'm only going to do and and then we're going to cover one side so A little discombobulated in this video. I want to make sure to get this one right. I want the biggest pocket possible. really hard with this patterned paper and this clear acetate. Again, on this one, we're going to cut the height first. That's how I ended up with it a little bit short by leaving the little bit because of the little bit of red. know what I mean I should have made it a little extra wide so that when I cut it I would um, have the full size okay I just glue this on and then we're gonna make a pocket in the center I don't know why I flipped that over, doesn't matter. So just whatever paper you're using, just look at it to where you get the best use of your paper um, so that you get the most out of it. You don't want to waste any paper. Yeah, this one the glue really spread. Doesn't matter though, the card will be this wide. It just won't go in the pocket that far or all the way to the edge. But anyway, so now we've got the pocket in the belly band and we can still see the full paper once we take the cards out. On this, we're gonna put a pocket, but I'm not gonna make it clear. I'm gonna make it the opposite. 
about the uh, no. We're going to make it the opposite of this, which is this. We're going to go to opposite land. And first I'm going to cut a two inch piece, two and a half. Two's a little short. Then that way all I have to do is measure the width. <clears throat> Cheers. And then all we'll have to do is the front or the flap and I'm not going to do that part. And camera. Alright, so that's how you measure the width and then you just glue it on on three sides. Oh, I flipped the paper over by accident. I was looking on the wrong side. Okay, I'm going to just glue that on. And then I think I might glue um trying to think what I want to do. This will probably be a tag in here, not a card. Now, actually, when I'm using pad paper, usually it's okay with me to just leave it without inking it. Um, that's totally up to you. Okay, so we've got that. We're going to make a tag, a card, and either a card or a tag, but I'm thinking card, card, tag. And then I'll do that off camera. And then put a pocket, a belly band, um, decoration, whatever you want on that one. So then we've got this. And then in the next video, we'll throw the ribbon on real quick. And we'll glue it on here. So that this video isn't so, so long. And... Um, You know, it really doesn't take that long to do the ribbon. Let's get it done. Let's just get it done. If it takes us till 10 after, it takes us till 10 after. And then we're, this is just the front of this one. So we're going to try to... This is just going to take a lot of videos. That's just all there is to it. Um... Like I said, I've set aside 15, 15 days. Um, you can glue this all the way across if you want to make sure that it's straight. But I don't mind eyeballing it. Now, I'm going to do extra and then I can trim it later. Okay, we need it to go to here and to tie.
I know that's way too long, but it's okay. So now I'm going to make another piece the same length. And, you know, if you want to do another decoration on that inside narrower cover, there's nothing that says you can't. And, you know, we'll decorate the pocket. And then you do want to go all the way to the edge on this. You usually do pretty good eyeballing this. You can measure if you want, draw a line. So then these should be even pretty much. This one's going to be a little bit longer. So I think it's not in as far as this one, but that's all right. So then we'll be able to tie this. Oh, look. And I'm not very good at bows at all. As we all know, it's an issue with my fingers. Okay, so we're going to tie it like that, and then we're going to glue it on the front. That's why I wrote ribbon on there, and I put the direction of where they're going to go, up, down, or left, and right. Or maybe just one, depending on how you're going to tie it. Well, at least there's glue coming out. That's progress. You want to make sure that this opens this way. So that makes this the top. I'm going to put this in the center. And center it from top to bottom. And then we're going to make it straight. Sorry if my hair was in the way. Oh, look at that. That looks nice. I like it. And that'll hold this shut. Looks like a Christmas present. It's going to look more like a Christmas present pretty soon. 
Well, not pretty soon, but soon. Okay. So, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. And that will be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay. Bye-bye.